fellow Ambazonians. Chris Anno here, your communication secretary, and today is Thursday, February 22nd, in the year of our Lord, 2018. This message is being addressed to the SDA party of John Frundi, chairman, and the entire Bermuda public. We are reminded how in 1990, John Frundi's rise to affluence came with a sacrifice or death of six people in the streets of Bermuda. Today, in 2018, it is very evident that Frundi's downfall is finally here. And like in 1990, Frundi has resolved that his fall must be accompanied by the sacrifice of blood. He has asked the colonial governor of Bamenda to flood the streets of the city with foreign troops of La Republique du Cameroon and declared a state of emergency so that the SDF can hold its convention in peace. Unfortunately, the interim government of Ambazonia isn't going to allow this mockery to repeat itself this time. Since Frondi has resolved to mastermind his own plunge from grace by insisting that his convention must go on in the southern Cameroons, he will go down, but go down, he must go alone. At the beginning of this week, the interim government made a passionate appeal to the SDF chairman to show solidarity for the struggle of the independence of the Southern Cameroon by cancelling the party's convention scheduled for Baminda this weekend and that he boycott the elections being organized in our territory by the foreign government of La Republique du Cameroon. Many other Ambazonians equally joined in the cause making spirited appeals in which they hoped Mr. Frondi would listen to them and change his mind about the convention. The Presbyterian Church Center in Intamalun was equally petitioned by same concerned Southern Cameroonians to desist from hosting the convention. Why the church listened to the voices of the people, Chairman Frondi insisted that, come rain, come sun, he must hold his convention in Bermenda. He has now shifted the grounds of the convention to the Bermenda Congress Hall, where he has asked for thousands of foreign troops from La Republique du Cameroon to be brought into Bermenda to protect him and protect his convention. Let this be very clear. John Frondi has the right to hold his party convention. The interim government of the Southern Cameroon's Ambazonia isn't denying him that right. Our contention, however, is that the elections which the convention wants to select candidates for are being organized by a foreign country, a country that Southern Cameroonians have seen severe ties with on October 1st, 2017. Were the SDF convention to take place anywhere in La Republique du Cameroon, where we have no reservations with it. But that isn't the case. Trying to hold their convention and facilitate La Republique du Cameroon elections in our territory tantamount to saying that the SDF doesn't recognize the fact of our declaration of our independence last October. The convention of the SDF and the election they plan participating in are a spite of the evidence of the sovereignty of our territory and its governing authority, which is this interim government. We hold, therefore, that the SDF is hosting its convention in the wrong territory since election they plan on participating in are not organized by the legitimate administering authority of the Southern Cameroon, Zambazonia. We again therefore reiterate the illegality of the SDF and its convention as a legitimate Southern Cameroon's political party and ban its politicians and those of any other political formation including the CPDM from carrying out any form of politicking 
in all of the geographical entity called Ambazonia, or the former British Southern Cameroons. Because John Frondi is aware of the criminality of holding his convention in Amber Land, he asked Paul Beer to deploy thousands of La Republic du Cameroon troops into Bamenda. No one in Bamenda should be naive. The troops are not in Bamenda to protect Frondi and the convention. They are sent there to slaughter Ambazonians, and after the slaughter, they will say they were protecting, they were, they were protecting the SDF and the convention from terrorists. And the world, of course, will believe them, especially when they have developed the habit of planting Ambazonia Defense Forces uniforms on innocent civilians they kill. The interim government has, however, for the safety of all Ambazonians in the city of Bermuda, taken some precautionary measures at preventing the planned blood sacrifice that the SDF chairman John Frondi has initiated. The interim government has therefore declared a three-day, a three-day, one-of-a-kind special ghost town in the city of Bermuda beginning today, Thursday, February 22, through Saturday, February 24. Again, this special ghost town is only to take place in the city of Bermuda, and the main goal here is to prevent the genocide that Mr. John Frundi has invited to Bamenda through the invitation he extended to colonial troops from La Republic du Cameroon. After this weekend, Bamenda and only Bamenda City will be spared the regular Monday ghost town for this coming Monday. The interim government is therefore appealing to every resident of Bamenda City. If you will love your life, remain indoors today, Thursday, Friday, and of course on Saturday. John Frondi has plans for blood sacrifice in Bermuda. But enough blood was already shared when the SDA was launched. We don't need blood to go down with a party anymore or a second time. You send your children to the street, you do so at your own risk. You go out to work, you do so at your own risk. You open your shop, and you do so at your own risk. Any taxi and Okada that dare go out, do so or do so at your own risk. The colonial governor of the Northwest, in the statement announcing his state of emergency in Bermuda, the other day stated that all vehicles and transportation in the city must be grounded at certain hours. But he equally underlined the fact that all ambulance services have to remain functional throughout the period of the state of emergency. What do they need ambulance service for in a state or during a state of emergency for God's sake? If the plan isn't to kill as usual, they have colluded with the SDF convention planners to shoot or kill people, and then, of course, rush the corpses to the hospitals or mortuaries. That means people must die for the SDF to hold this convention because John Frundi has said over his dead body, the convention must take place. Fellow Ambazonians, Throughout this revolution for the actualization of the sovereignty of the Southern Cameroons, John Frundi and his lackeys have proven again and again that they are no different from the party that has enslaved all of us for 56 years, talking about the CNU and then the CPDM. When the Honorable Joseph Weber, for example, stood up against all odds in Yawande to decry, detest, and to advocate for the restoration of the Southern Cameroons. What was the SDF position? Not a single member of the, of the SDF, not even John Frundi, the chairman of the party, stood up in support of Honorable Weber. 
Instead, the Honorable Weber was made an outcast in the party. John Frundy, in particular, got so mad, he made moves to dismiss Honorable Weber from the SDF. When some members of the SDF allegedly resigned from the party, I mean, from parliament, in the wake of the October 1st Independence Declaration, John Frondi was also reported to have gotten very furious at those members of the party who said they had resigned from parliament, even threatening, going as far as threatening to sanction them within the National Executive Committee of the party. He demanded that they change their position and return to parliament, and of course they did, against the wishes of our people. As recently as February 11, when the interim government called for the complete boycott of 11 February in our territory, guess who was sitting inside the grandstand in Bermuda with the colonial governor of Bermuda? Of course, it was John Frundy. Does it surprise anyone that today, John Frundy moves around, guarded and protected by the same colonial soldiers who have carried out pogroms and genocide, maimed, brutalized, looted, and burned down whole towns and villages in the southern Cameroons. Today and tomorrow at their convention, why some will be protecting them to sit in and have free discussions, even in violation of the so-called state of emergency. Frundi would instruct that same colonial troops be stationed around town in Bermuda to arrest and to shoot to kill anyone who dares question why he should be hosting a convention in the city. If you still have any doubt why the SDF and its leaders stand in this fight for the freedom of the southern Cameroon, just ask yourself, why has John Frundi or any members of the SDF not as much as visited any of the villages in Manuwe, occupational troops from La Republic to Cameroon burned down. Why have they not visited any of those villages or towns? Why have they not visited any of the refugee camps in Nigeria? Let it be known that as this, at this pivotal moment in our fight for self-determination, our most dangerous enemies are not only the ones that live in Yaoundé and speak in French. Our most dreaded enemies are right around us. They are within us. The chieftain of them all is Chairman John Frundi. And the machine that drives them is the SDF. And of course, every other Southern Cameroon's politician, the Akere Monas of the world, the Kawalas of the world, among others, who think that their self-centered politicking is the only salvation to our freedom. In 1991 or so, the SDF boycotted a national election arguing that the playing field wasn't leveled, that the results were going to be rigged. If Frondi could lead the SDF to boycott an election on a less weighty excuse that it would be rigged, how come the SDF cannot boycott elections today after many are and some have actually paid for the sins of the unjust treatment of our people by blood? Why is it so hard for the SDF to walk away from Yawande like Dr. E. M. L. Indele, Foncha, Infon Mukete, and others did when the Southern Cameroon came under similar treatment in the Eastern House of Assembly in Nigeria. Since it is clear that Frundi and his party no longer really represent us, that he doesn't really care about what happened to the Southern Cameroons, about children who have now sacrificed their education for almost two years for the freedom of our territory, since he does not care about the teachers who have lost their jobs for this revolution, since Frundi doesn't care about the lawyers who have also lost their means of income for the entire period of this revolution. 
since Frundi doesn't care about all the young men and women who now live in the bushes for fear of being killed by invading terrorist soldiers who are also protecting him. Since Frundi doesn't care for people like that, for people like that old mummy burnt alive in Kwa Kwa, like the young doctor shot to death in Bamenda the other day, and like the young boy shot at Bayale in Kwen yesterday. By virtue of the fact that he has insisted that over his dead body would the convention be cancelled, he is out to legitimize every illegality that Paul Beer is perpetrating against the Southern Cameroons. Frondi for money and power is selling Ambazonia by choosing to ally with Paul Beer. After all, after all is said and done, Mr. Beer will point to Frondi as the reason, as the evidence that only a few of us terrorists, in quote, as he calls it, want to break the country. People like Frundi are the reason why our president, Sisiko Ayuktabi, Mancho BBC, and others sit in handcuffs behind bars. Let's rise up like one man. Let's collaborate in Bamenda this weekend and remind Chairman John Frundi that we met him and now is the time to mar him and the party. That he and the SDF have no place in the southern Cameroon's Amazonia. And that the SDF and its convention are declared persona non grata. Ghost town today and through Saturday, we will live free or die. Again, this came to you from Chris Anu, your communication secretary. And thanks again for listening today. Thank you.